Howdy folks, I am going to show you how in ZBrush to start uh, thinking about topology that is going from a dynameshed surface to a uh, surface with subdivision levels. Okay, so for example, with this alien creature, I'm looking at the head mesh, which is split out into, into a separate subtool. If I turn on polyframe, um, I'm going to be looking at a mesh that has one subdivision level, that means it's only got one resolution and it's the resolution we're looking at. Okay, and it's kind of a mess uh, as far as topology goes, which so far hasn't been a concern. But now I want to start adding more details like resolving the eyelids uh, and the folds around the mouth uh, and even wrinkles and stuff like that. So before I start doing all of that um, uh, refining of the secondary details and then adding tertiary details, I'd like to get the mesh in a little bit more of a respectable state. Okay, and we're going to do that using Z Remesher. Okay, so I'll turn on Solo so that we're just looking at the one mesh. Before I Z Remesh this, I'm going to duplicate my current subtool. Okay, so I'll hit duplicate and you can see we've got two identical subtools right here. We're going to use this one that we just duplicated later on. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off Polyframe because it's distracting. And I'm going to go under Tool, Geometry, Z Remesher. Okay, and all I've got to do is click Z Remesher. You can um, play around with the settings down here uh, to get uh, maybe closer to what you're looking for. These are the default settings, so I'm just going to see what I get with the default settings and uh, see if I can work with that. That is 5,000 poly 5, polygons um, to start with. So let's see what happens. Click Z Remesher. ZBrush is going to think a little bit. Or a lot. It's almost done. And so we're going to get a, a mesh that's lower resolution um, but has cleaner topology. So now if I turn on polyframe, we can see that the uh, polygons or the little faces or squares are a little bit bigger than they were before. So we've lost detail right we don't have as much detail as before but what we do have is a nice edge flow which we can um, use later on for things like uh, masking by topology right we can start to use that to our benefit and really easily mask off the inside of the mouth uh, or the top eyelids versus the bottom eyelids right and we can also um, use that topology to sort of uh, to our sculptural advantage as well okay and it's going to be easier for posing and things like that uh, so let's see now my main concern is that we don't have all the nice uh, finer sculpting that we did before so we've got to get that back right and so that's why we duplicated and created an instance of our um, previously sculpted mesh, our dynameshed uh, surface. So basically what we have here is one sculpt that is in dynamesh mode and one sculpt that is in regular subdivision mode. Okay, so what we want to do with this is add resolution to it. Okay, the way we do that is go under geometry and just click the divide button. Okay, you see how that softened the forms? Now if I look at polyframe, we can see that each one of the previous polygons is now divided into four more polygons. Okay, so we're adding resolution. Now, we're not adding any of the detail that we had before just yet. What we've got to do in order to do that is project from the old subtool onto the new one. So I'm going to turn solo off 
so that we can see both subtools. And then under the subtool palette, I'm going to turn everything off but these two um, head meshes that I want to use. So what I can do is just click the eye on the active subtool, then click over here on the little thumbnail. See, now I've got this top one selected and visible. And now click the eye on the next one that I want to make visible. And that's going to be just sort of the quickest way to do that as opposed to going tick, 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 and turning them all off. It's a nice little um, trick because sometimes this menu can be a little funny in its behavior. Okay, so now what we want to do again is project the old detail onto the new mesh. So I'm pretty sure I have this order in my head right, but what I want to do is have my target mesh selected. That's the one that we want to put the details onto. Okay, and then go under, uh, let's see here, under Subtool, Project, and what I want to do is Project All. So I'll click Project All, and you can see it jump there a little bit, right? So now if I turn off the Dynameshed surface and undo that projection and redo, you can see that we're starting to get some of our details back. Great. So let's try this again because we don't have quite the amount of detail as we did before because we're still a little bit low res. But now you can see that I can jump down to level 1 subdivision layout excuse me, subdivision level. If I want to make big broad changes to the form or the gesture or the shape or whatever, then I can make them here without worrying about um, affecting the, the tertiary details or anything above. And if I want to start doing secondary or tertiary details, I'm going to step up in subdivision levels to where I have more resolution to do that kind of sculpting. Okay, but now we want to add yet another subdivision level, so I'm going to click Divide, okay, and now we want to do another projection to get even more of those juicy details back, okay, so here we go, we'll go back down to Project, Project All, wait for ZBrush, go ahead and, uh, rather than turning this on and off, I'm just going to switch into Solo Mode, which I have set to an, um, a shortcut key of Alt S. So if I hit Alt S, I can toggle between solo um, and unsolo mode. Okay, so let's see here. Now it looks like we're getting pretty good results. If I want to compare between my new proper topology and the old Dynamesh surface, rather than coming over here and clicking back and forth, all I really have to do is hit the down arrow key on my keyboard. Okay, and if you look over here at the subtool palette, when I do that, hit down and then back up, it'll step through the subdivision level, or uh, excuse me, it'll step through the subtools. And this is really great because now I don't have to look over at the subtool palette to click back and forth. And I can find sort of the path of least resistance in observing what changes occurred between my uh, two models. Okay, so we still could get maybe a little bit more of the tool marks and stuff like that. You know, we're going to need more resolution down the road anyways, so I like to just get it all in there up front if possible. So what I'm going to do is add another subdivision level. I'll hit divide. So now, we, now we've got three. So if I step down, you see that, down to two, and down to one. Okay, and the shortcut for this, um, as you can see by hovering over the higher resolution button, is D. Right? And the shortcut for stepping down is Shift-D. Those are primarily, if you're a shortcut junkie like I am, uh, are going to be what you'll use. D and Shift-D. So now we've divided it one more time. 
and it actually looks kind of nice here. Um, to see, dividing dividing this subtool once from level three with the amount of detail we had actually did a kind of nice job at softening out some of the details. Almost like we um, we softened it out with some uh, brush and some alcohol or even a, an alcohol torch or something like that if it were clay. So now I'm going to step back and forth between my sub tools. Yeah, and you know what? I think I've changed my mind. I don't think I'm going to project these tool marks back onto my surface. Um, I'm going to save that sort of thing for alphas. Okay, so now that we've subdivided it one last time to level four, I think I'm done with my projection. So what I'm going to do is come down here to my Dynamesh surface, hit delete because we don't need that anymore. Say yes, delete, and come back here to my new, uh, newly remeshed surface. And now if I want to switch back on all of these sub tools, um, all I have to do is turn off the little eye and turn the eye back on of the active sub tool. Okay, and now we can step down step up, down, up, depending on what sort of resolution we're going to need. And um, now we're ready to keep going with tertiary details.